We're back with Workshop Wednesday. We missed last week because of some technical issues, technical problems beyond our control, but we're back for Workshop Wednesday today. This time on Twitch, for a little difference, and it's actually kind of good because I learned some things about weaving last week, and now we can get into that and uh, hopefully make something a little bit better. So we're just gonna weave a little like a coaster, a little square pattern out of this yarn, you know, something just maybe that big, roughly, um, out of yarn on a homemade loom. This is a cardboard loom that I made uh, just basically last week. And so all this is, and the reason I made it off camera is because you have to glue uh, stuff to it, which requires it to dry. So it's a piece of cardboard, and I cut notches into this every quarter inch, or I think that's six millimeters, six or eight millimeters. Uh, cut notches into this, starting in the center and working out for best um, rigidity in the cardboard. Same thing on the other end. So you've got these notches here as well. And then I glued some pieces of cardboard onto this because the yarn is going to be looped over this and I need some space underneath to kind of work the yarn, right? So let's go ahead and just start putting some yarn on here. This is just some straight up yarn, nothing too crazy there. I'm actually gonna knot the end of the yarn and do a double knot there just so I'm, just to make sure that it's gonna do what I want it to. It's gonna stay. And so I'm just gonna loop this onto here. I'm actually not gonna use the entire piece of cardboard. So I'm just gonna take this, put it there, pull it in. Take it down here, put it here. I, you want I well, I found it's useful to make it pretty tight. And then you, whoops. And then I pull it around the other way. Oh, that's right, I discovered that it's better if you kind of notch it first and then pull it through. Uh, you can't go too, too tight on this because the cardboard will bend. Um, you know, this is not gonna be incredibly This is not incredibly rigid material here, the cardboard. But we're just gonna go ahead and do this. And I've learned, like I said, some, some neat tricks about how to do this effectively. So we'll go ahead and do this. Again, just work the yarn there and then pull it taut, as taut as you can. Pull it down. Again, trying to make this pretty rigid. work this over all of these and then we'll get there all right. yeah I'll probably go around man maybe two-thirds of the way down on this maybe half okay I'm just working this back and forth there are multiple different kinds of looms with multiple different ways of threading them or whatever the term is. Uh, this is another one of those situations where there are you know, specific terms for everything. And I will probably just end up using kind of generic terms. So apologies if anyone is watching this from the, uh, you know, the, the weaving community and screaming and yelling because I'm not using the exact right terms. Um, but for me right now, that is all um, a little much. It's, it's a little more than, uh, than I'm willing to commit to to just learn this stuff. Um, okay. I, I value learning that information, but not at the expense of getting started with all this stuff. You get into that sort of, you know, if you don't know what the terms are, you don't know what you're talking about, and so your, your opinion doesn't matter. Well, I, I, I hear you, but also if you're actually making stuff, I think that's not always true. Okay. So we'll leave this here, we'll leave that there. Yeah, so we're gonna stop here, maybe with this one. I don't need to go and get something super, super wide. And maybe a little further. This will tighten up, I believe. Uh, eh, yeah, I think that'll do it right there. Um, let me go back, and yeah, we'll, we'll do one more row, and we'll tie it off there. So we're gonna put this in here, 
and we'll just stop that here. So I'm going to pull this here, and then I'm actually going to wrap this around and pull it into another notch, and then do that again into another notch, and then pull that off and cut that and just tie it. Actually, I don't even have to tie it, just kind of tuck it in there. Come on. Yeah, we'll tie it. Why not? Okay. So we have this nice, this, this loom, uh, all strung up, so to speak. And so now we're going to go ahead and start weaving. And I need to pull off some stuff. Oh, that's right. And I learned that basically it makes sense to figure out how much you need and kind of prep that out. Um, so I know, wait. So if I'm going across here, this is gonna be, uh, that's about 12 centimeters. Um, so it's 24. Yeah, I prefer to go, so maybe what I'll do, I should have gone like 15. Um, but we'll, we'll have some extra, that's fine. So I need basically, so this is, we're going to pretend this is half of the the uh, the ruler, and that'll give me some extra anyway. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16, 17, 18. So I need nine lengths of this, half that, and we'll go with 10. So I'm going to go 1, Two, three, four, five. So that'll give me a square, right? With some extra. Oops. Six and seven. Eight. Try not to pull it taut. Nine. And ten. Okay, so that should give me plenty to work with. And I did discover you can actually, you know, stop part way, kind of tie it off, and then continue on with a strand. So if I have to do that, we can. That's, that's not a big deal. All right, so let's go ahead and thread my needle. This is a... Needle. I actually 3D printed, which is pretty cool. Why is that showing offline? That's weird. Stats are showing me offline, but I'm, I don't appear to be. Um, well, I can check. One second. Just want to check my uh, my site. Um, no, that is showing me live. Okay, eh, weird. Just dashboard's being funky. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and weave. Oh, how do you, how do you start this? Um, I think you just tie off one end. You tie one end basically down here, and then you go, well, let, me, let me check. Uh, uh, three. I think that was it. Let's see. Nope. One sec. Ah. So we start with the loom, we set that up, uh, and then how did they start? Oh, that makes sense. They didn't actually tie, uh, cut it off. They actually started weaving at that point, I think. Or no, no, they didn't. Uh, so they just wove through. Oh, of course, now YouTube has to... Oh, so you just went through. Okay, that makes sense. So what we're going to do is go over and under, over and under over and under, like this. And pull this through. And I'm just gonna pull this all the way through. Not all the way through, but almost all the way through. And we're just gonna stop right here. Okay, so there's a little bit of a tail right there. Uh, we'll end up tying that off and snipping it off later, but that's 
you know, that's going to be the bottom of our of our thing. Actually, they, she talked about having, or someone I saw here showed having a uh, fork using to pull those out. Let me grab a fork. That makes sense. So we're going to weave this back in, back through. Let's see how this goes. Let me go ahead and move my yarn out of the way so it's not going to be, I'm not going to knock into it and you know have it go flying. Uh, so then I do know you need to, so on the second row, you want to go opposite of what you went before. So you see this, this piece of yarn here, this is the end of my row, it goes over here. So I want to go, I want to go under on the next row up. In the next column up, I suppose. So we're going to go under that one instead of over on the, on the previous one. So we'll do that and thread it through. And there are various tools you use to kind of push these up and pull them back down, which we're not using here uh, because they're not necessary. They make it easier, but they're not necessary. So I thought I'd start simple. I'm going to pull that through. Whoa! I need to tie that knot a little more carefully. Lesson learned. I might just square knot that. The other thing I need to learn is knots. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do a, a loose little square knot. Okay. So we pull this through. And then what I've learned is you don't pull it down like super tight. You pull it down. So you, you go like that. And then you actually want to keep like a curve on there. And um, so it should hurt. Okay, kind of doing this. Yep, there. So we'll come down a little bit on there. But you don't want to go super tight. Because, actually, let's go ahead and keep keep that that loop. Because if you go tight, then as you go up, it binds in the sides, kind of naturally. But as long as you keep that up there, then then, uh, you know, the next one you kind of pull down, you pull down, you pull down, and, and eventually and it'll stay kind of straight, or more straight than otherwise. So you see here, we went over on here, so you gotta go under on this one, and weave through here. Oops, just realized. And one thing I really like about this is that if you mess up, you just pull it apart, right? It's not hard to fix your mistakes. So I'm pulling that through. So let's go ahead and pull this down. And then, again, give that a nice, pull that down a little bit. Yeah, the fork definitely helps. But keep that. Yeah, so you see how already this is starting to bind in a little bit over here on the left. It's starting to pull in. So we're going to try to avoid that. All right, so that went over. So this needs to go under. And I think once this is done, it will be a little tighter than what we see here, but I'm not sure. Oops. So we just weave this through. Let me go back, check dashboard. Okay. Yeah. All right, so just pull that through very gently. Whoa! Committed suicide there. I feel like this is not a lot of yarn. Then we're gonna pull that down. Yeah, that fork's nice. And then we just, in fact, I might just keep this looped that way. I think that's going to, I think I'm going to, you know, basically do one, tuck this down, um, you know, do the next one, you know, keep one looped and then tuck the next one down. I think that will make this appropriately, uh, you know, woven, you know, tightly woven, so to speak, without binding on the sides. And we'll find out. That needs to go down a bit more. Yeah, the fork is pretty much essential. When I was doing this before, I was kind of using my fingers and my fingernails, and it just wasn't working very well. So I'm going to pull this in like this. 
again, give that a bit of a curve, but then pull this down. Yeah, so giving it the curve ensures that, yeah, that makes so much sense. Yeah. So it allows it to kind of, um, to weave into the, to the earlier bit. All right, yep, it's, just, it's keeping some looseness in here. All right, so I'm glad I did that, definitely. And we're just gonna keep on doing this. And like I said, we'll just see where we go. This does feel like it's not enough yarn to make it an actual square. Maybe that's just me. Yeah, one of the things I love about this is how you can make a loom out of just a cardboard box, just an Amazon box, and you're done. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna bind in a little bit, so we gotta be careful. So we'll pull this down a little. I'm actually gonna pull out a little on the on this side, so it's not uh, uh, binding as much. So we that was over. So this goes under. I was looking into how to you know, sort of change it up um, and change the the pattern. Oops. One of the complexities there is it is woven. So you can't, it's hard to get a, a solid color. This is going to go under and over, under and over, right? Um, push that down, push that in. There we go. Yeah, that's good. Interesting. Okay. So let me pull that in. So obviously, the, I'm not going to go that all the way down, but we'll get, keep, it, keep the curve. Um, the exact amount of curve you have here will affect how much yarn you have going on under the, the prior rows. Um, so you can't, you don't want to get too high, otherwise there's lots of looseness down there. Um, and I think it's just going to be a thing that you, you experiment with and figure out. Uh, so yeah, you just make a, a loom out of a piece of cardboard and you're done. Kind of cool. Pull this through. Yeah, this is I don't know, not nearly enough yarn. I don't know what I'm what, how I calculated that wrong. Let me get that the scissors out of the well. Scissors over there. Pull down this row. And then pull this again a little bit. Good. And under this time and over. There we are. There we are, there we are, there we are. Okay, but this will be a good um, exercise in uh, cutting off a row and going from there and sort of reattaching. Okay, so that seems like a good amount. So you notice there's a lot of looseness on that side there. I kind of I gave it a lot of, so I'm actually going to just tug. Oh, that's weird. What did I do wrong? Those are, that's not right. That's not right either. Huh. That's over, that's under, that's over, that's under. That's over. So you can see, I've got two rows that are both over and under. And I can't quite see where I messed up, so let's pull it out. Huh. Over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And that one is under. Oh, because this one is wrong. Okay, so I, I messed up on the previous one. Okay. So let's see how hard it is to um, correct a mistake. That goes, yeah, that goes over two. So we undo this. Good to know. Good to learn. Okay. And that, yeah, again, so we just, oops. <laughs> Unfortunately, I only need to undo, let's see here, so we do it, do it. Root. Pull that out like this. So you can see here is where I accidentally went over right here. 
is where I accidentally went over two different columns, if you will. So I'm just going to pull back to that point. Yep. And so that needs to go over, under, over, under, over. There, fixed. Good. That goes over, so this goes under. Okay. I'm glad that happened. Because it shows me that problems like that are easy and quick to fix. Okay. Over, this goes under. Just have to keep an eye on what you're weaving. So it's never fun, obviously, to uh, to make a mistake like that. But I like knowing that I can resolve them very quickly. So we'll push that down. There we are. And then pull that down so it's, again, still loose. And then that goes like this. I will want to make sure to check every so often that my uh, my weave is correct, so to speak. Okay, pull that down so it's not binding up on me, and then give that some space without going too nuts. Okay, and continue on. This would be, as I, I don't think I actually, no, I mentioned this in the, the previous show, which is lost, lost to the mists of time. I discovered that this is not something you'd want to do while watching anime, for example, while watching a TV show. You just, you can't divide your attention that way. There's just, you know, you're going to miss things. Uh, in the TV show. So unfortunately, you can't really divide your attention uh, too much when you listen to something else. But a podcast, perfect. Audiobook, ideal for this kind of thing. That might be a thing we have to think about in the future, is doing something like that. Okay. I do really enjoy this kind of stuff. Being able to actually make something based on your own your own experiences. So I noticed when I pull this taut, it has a tendency to, to pull this side in. So I'm trying to be careful not to do that. So maybe if I just grab the side so that those two are loose. Okay. And then we continue doing this. So obviously there's a certain amount of uh, tension in the strings, in the yarn. And so you don't necessarily want to start right down here with your needle because then you will um, it'll be very hard to get underneath all those pieces of yarn. But if you start way out in the middle, it's, uh, it takes a little longer to get the, the yarn down. So you've got to kind of find your, your middle ground there. Okay. Give it a... Yeah, that's better. Okay. And here we go. Continuing on. Yeah, I could definitely listen to some audiobooks this way. I don't know what I'm going to use this skill for yet. I don't have a strong practical reason for it. Obviously some stuff you can use for like winter clothes. Whoa, I messed that up. So you see what, ha what happened here. This is just not on anything. Right, it's the loop, so I need to redo that. So let me pull that back out. My mistake. It's funny, I made I did not make any of these mistakes in my first time through. I went over, so this should go, okay, yeah. Um, although I ended up with a piece that was kind of weirdly warped because I didn't know this trick. One simple trick. Uh, but now that I'm making these mistakes, it's good because I, I can see how easy they are to fix. All right, so we tie this up. We pull this down. 
Yeah, we're getting a nice weave out of this. I like this a lot. Let me grab this as we pull down. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, personally, I just like weaving from the middle because there's much less tension and it's just easier. Did I do that right? I think so. Tuck this down. Yeah, so we're getting a little bit of, of tightness on the side, but um, I think, again, for, for a beginner, that's quite, quite reasonable. I do not expect my first attempts at anything to, to turn out beautifully and all that stuff. I'm getting fairly close to the end of this strand. So I did underestimate the amount of cloth I'd need, the amount of yarn I'd need. Uh, yep. Which is interesting. Uh, I don't know what's causing that. Because I know I you know I measured that width. Oh, the yarn is going up and down. That's why. Yep. So the yarn that would that would be accurate if the yarn was in a straight line the entire time, but it's going up and down and up and down between those other two uh, these other pieces of yarn, and that is increasing the length, the, the distance it has to travel. Science, it works. Okay. So that is a useful thing to realize. And it gives us an opportunity to try tying off a strand and then continuing from there and just see what that looks like. And I think that, you know the secret to that is that generally with these things, you only show them from one side. So you can have like a knot on the back and that's going to be fine. Right, that's going to, that'll work. Yeah, so you really have to, to manage those, those edges to make sure you're not tuck, uh, tugging them too, too far. So we'll continue here. And like I said, I want basically a square of finished woven stuff. definitely weaving together nicely like that's a, that's very nice um, let me pull that a little bit there we are I'm not gonna get a lot more out of this did I do it nope no nope, that's that's right Yes, yeah, you can see how in, at some points I was very loose on the amount of yarn on the end. And so it's a little more, um, like over here, uh, there's a little more yarn there. It's not tucked in quite as well as it is over like right, right here, where it's a little more uh, tight. So that's just something I'd have to experiment with in terms of how loose to make each of those. It's probably something you just got, got to learn through feel over time and different weights of yarn and so forth. Okay, this goes in here. This might be interesting for cosplay. I wonder how many cosplay outfits have this kind of like, you know, the, the, the woven yarn things on characters, like uh, Edith Finch. Okay, yeah, that needs to be a little tauter, a little more taut. There we go. I'm realizing now that I'm seeing this how much control I do have when I'm pulling these things in that um, you know, if I see it's kind of loose over here for example I can just go ahead and finagle that as I'm weaving it in all right ooh, 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 ooh. so looking at this I probably want yeah another um, about about the same amount to get a square out of this Tighten it up a bit. And then tack it down. Pull that like 
that. And then, yeah, this might be our last, last line across. I wonder if it's better actually to, oh no, we have a few more. I wonder if it would be better to tie it off midstream. Interesting. Okay. Oh. You know, tie it off in the middle and then just have a tag on the back instead of on the end where you're going to see a little, uh, little bit of yarn, uh, uh, see a knot or something. Don't know. Okay. Put that through. Okay. Yep. I think that might do it, more or less. Okay. Can I make it one more? I can do one more. And then we'll look at how much I'm binding on the sides. Um, so I think what I need to do here is go ahead and finish this off, tuck that in. Oh, yes, you know, I'm going a little too much. Maybe it's okay to have those sides be, uh, be off. So I'm gonna just gonna, gonna go ahead and, actually, can I undo that knot? Oh, it's gonna be, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna have that cut off there for now. And we will do some some more stuff. Now I could also do that. They do that awesome thing where they wrap it around your your uh, you know your forearm, but I'm not that smart. Um, so if I do that much, that's that's about right. Okay. So again, I need ten feet. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and pull off a good chunk of this. One, two. Three, four, actually, five, six, there's a way to do it, seven, 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 eight, nine, ten, okay. Keep the yarn out of the way. That's good. Wrapping it around the ruler makes a lot, makes a lot of sense. All right. Um, Got to get this off. Wasting yarn. Oh, no. I wasted two inches of good, perfectly good yarn. I'm going to hell, clearly. Okay. So, again, we'll knot that. Square knot. So much to learn. Okay. So I think I'm going to start here. Um, see, it feels like I should. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this out halfway through. Uh, and I'm going to knot it. I'm going to connect these two. A little knot. No, that doesn't, no, that doesn't make sense. All right, let's, not for a coaster, right? Uh, this goes in under this one. Yep, okay. So let's go ahead and, all right, yeah, I'll figure that out later. What to do best on, on that, that, that point. Meanwhile, I will just go ahead and weave the next row and if you know, at some point I'll figure out the best way to uh, connect oh huh that's funny the yarn has a knot in it which hopefully I can undo yay Pull it through this way so I don't have to undo all my work. 
there. Okay. And pull this through. Ah, dang it. Dang it, Brent. Actually, now that I think about it, I could have just woven it through on this way. That's funny. Okay. Uh, ba -do -ba -do. Ba -do -ba -do. Oh, come on, yarn. There we are. Okay. Then we're going to pull that down. My mistake. Okay, and then we will. Okay, so you, as you can see, there is some pull in on the side, um, but minimal. That's good. I'm, I'm learning. That's all I asked for. All right, let's continue on. I don't know if I'll have to use this entire piece of, of yarn to get this, this whole uh, coaster done, but it's good to have. I know I have plenty, right? I know I have plenty to do the rest of this. That's kind of the... Uh, the important thing where it feels good okay actually I'm just gonna keep that there and then we will tie it in later I'll, I'll get the exact actually no see the way she was doing it she kind of pulled it okay yeah got it so basically you wanna you wanna kinda tie it around here so that you get a, a loop around the edge I think Maybe not. The more I think about it, so let's go ahead and pull this through. Oh, that's gonna that the knife wants to wants to catch it. The fork, rather. Okay, so then we pull this down. Yeah. Okay. We'll get here. No, 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 no. There we are. You can imagine how hard this would be without the needle. Fortunately, we don't need a sharp needle, just enough to, to thread it with. So I'm just going to pull this around like this. And then we can. Yes, yeah, so you kind of need to pull it down. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I can. Ooh, yeah. So this needs to be a little tighter there. So we pull that down, pull it through a bit more. Yeah. And just working with that those that that loop without getting it too taut. Alright, so that's just that's something you gotta you gotta play around with, is figuring out how tight you make that, and you gotta make little adjustments. Obviously, if you do this constantly, this goes under, this goes under, like over and under, um, then you'll have a much better feeling and a much better eye for uh, how taut it should be on the edges and in the center and all that stuff. But you can kind of, you can get it there. Yeah, that's definitely giving it the, the looseness it needs to be a good, good decent weave. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. And you see how it's t it's tauter here than down here, just because I'm of how much I'm packing it down with the uh, the fork. So that's another thing that it, again I'm sure will come with time and practice of just how much you tap that in and how you get used to to that and the weave and so forth. Okay. There we are. Actually, this is a good opportunity to look good. I think the weave is correct. I don't think I, I did that wrong anywhere. It's a relief. I don't think I'm going you know, over, under, then over, under again. I don't know what you call that when you have you know, two rows that are stitched the same. nice feeling this get close to a uh, 
what I want, right? Where you're starting to see it come together as an actual uh, product, an actual thing in the world. All right. And there we go. Great. This goes down here. Tap that down. Man, that fork is just really useful. Again, I guess you technically don't need it, but I would never weave without it. Um, I guess I would. Like, if I had to, you can use your fingernails. But that's definitely a huge improvement. And I know that the pieces of wood also help a lot because you're able to push it up and then and just weave more effectively. But pull it a little, yeah. yeah, pull that through a little bit more. There. Yeah, just making those adjustments. And this is part of the process too, I think, is just doing this, you know, enough times that you see the effects of what you're doing on your product, on your your thing, on your project, probably the better term. And there we are. So yeah. And then you can make adjustments to make it, you know, work better and look better. Good. This is definitely feeling much closer to what I've wanted out of this, which is again just a simple coaster. But fortunately, you know. Once this is done, next step is very simple. You know, you start going online and looking for projects you can do with this. As I, I was mentioning before, I was thinking of things to do with this. And maybe custom weaving like a map for uh, Dungeons and Dragons, so people actually come across a, uh, you know, a somebody wove a map of a dungeon into a piece of cloth would be kind of interesting. So you would weave in, you know, black here and black up and so forth and so on. Don't know quite how you do that because you have these long, you know, rows and columns. And figuring out how to do all that just seems kind of crazy to me. Uh, in terms of planning all of that, but maybe it's doable. I guess you could do, you could certainly do, because part of the problem is you have this weave. Um... I mean, because you're you're going over, under, over, under. I guess you could do two. Mm, I guess you could do two side by side in one color, uh, and just you know just do two and tie it off in the back, and run that up. Um, hmm. Interesting. I may have to play around with that idea. Um, you know, just string up maybe ten pieces of yarn, and then. Do you know, a little bit in, in one color, and then do black up in one, and then over, and then fill in. I don't know. That's weird. Weird, but interesting. Definitely not the thing you do, you know, every week for your players. But it would certainly be a neat, uh, uh, a neat one-off thing. And there's a little bit of yarn stuck in there. I want to get off. Okay. I've not been good about checking my weave and making sure that I'm not making mistakes on the actual weave. But it seems to be good so far. So that's good. Okay, yeah, we're very close, relatively close, on finishing out this, this square of yarn. It is very simple. Again, it'll just be a coaster I put somewhere in the house. And then from there, we'll move on to more practical things. It'll be interesting to make, like, I don't know, uh, gloves, arm warmers, something like that, socks. I guess you can make socks out of this, right? I don't know. Seems like you could. Nice, toasty winter socks.
frosty winter songs. All right. I admit it is a little difficult coming up with things to say about this because ultimately we're just weaving back and forth. And I'm certainly not a huge world expert in this, so there's not like I have a lot to, uh, a lot of knowledge to pass on about how to do all this. But yeah, I'm definitely, definitely feeling more like a full, full project. Okay. You'll notice, by the way, that the needle is slightly curved, kind of hard to tell. Uh, but the curve of the needle makes it a little easier to go up and under and over things. Uh, it is actually a feature, not a bug. Most of the needles I've seen, in fact, pretty much all of the uh, needles I've seen for looms are quite quite curved, much more curved than that one. There's kind of the end, like this last bit curves up quite a bit. Okay, interesting. So I just tried tugging down from the center first, and I think that makes a lot of sense because you get that down and then that kind of releases the tension on the side. So I think I'm going to do that moving forward and see if that is a more effective way of changing the tension on these pieces of yarn. So pull that through, and then we're going to tug down in the center first. Yeah, yeah, that's much better. Much more even, gives you much more control. Okay, good. I learned something. Do -do -do. Yeah, we're just about there with the this square of fabric. In fact, might just measure this. See, now that I've learned that trick, I want to try it out some more. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. So this is a, a ten and a half centimeters wide, and we are now eh, about nine and a half centimeters. Okay, so good. We will probably finish up this piece of yarn, and we'll figure out how to tie off that little bit on the end. And I think I'll just square knot it and cut it way back. That might be the only way of doing that. Um, it's tough when you want to use this as a uh, coaster, because then you want both sides to be flat. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow your roll there. Hold on. Okay, hold on. There we go. Let out, pull that down. Okay. Went a bit too crazy there. A little nuts. Okay. Yeah, you could definitely pack this down a lot if you had a if you wanted to on your fork. And I'm probably packing it down a little bit too much. But there we go. Okay. Also feels good to be getting to the uh, end of a piece of yarn there. So again, we fork down in the middle and then to the sides, and that, yeah, gives us a lot more, more control. Let's just pull that out a bit. All right. Under instead of over, and continue on. down might be a bit yeah I think we need to tug this in a little bit more a little more tension good and we're just about there I know I've been saying that for a while but truly and honestly yeah that's a good square okay 
just looking at it. It feels feels right. Down to the center, to the sides. Cool. All right. Um, do I want to go any further? Ten and a half. Just ten. Okay, move, move, move a little further. We'll, we'll finish it out. Funny how deceptive that could be. I should check my weave. Weave looks great. Surprising. I wonder if there's an easy way of telling. Like constantly marking for yourself that you're going over here and under there. And so if you know if you're ever off, you know, oh, I must have missed a missed a stitch, basically. Not that you'd ever want to miss a stitch. Okay. Do do. And there we go. Remind me of Lilo and Stitch. There. Love that movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, we've got maybe two more rows here out of this. And then we'll be there. We'll be done. Hey, Dropkicks. Yep, this is the cardboard loom. This is literally a loom made out of cardboard with yarn on it. You can make it yourself and knit your own things. Make your own clothing. Imagine that. Imagine having that skill. It's funny how I run across people who are like, you know, I, I want to be able to survive the zombie apocalypse. And, you know, I don't buy stuff digitally because I want to be able to uh, to hang on to my stuff in case, uh, uh, you know, in case things go south. And obviously they're being a little silly. But there's this clear thing to where they, you know, they, they, they want to be able to uh, do well if things are if they don't have access to all their normal stuff and i'm like well yeah do you know how to like make clothing you know do you have any actual practical skills or are you just making sure you, you still have your copies of you know saga it's like i i'm thinking maybe it would be useful to learn some of this stuff Finish it out. And then we also need to figure out how to actually know. Because I want to be able to to uh, finish it off. And there's something to finishing it off where you use kind of that, that thing. So let me let me try that. Okay, so then we're gonna cut this off, cut this off, uh, and then we need to finish it off. And I know before I basically just knotted it, um, which may be what I have to do here. Um, but what I saw before is basically cut that off, so you have those lines, and how did, how did they do that? How would you fix that? Um, other than just like knotting all of these, these things together. I don't know. So, let's just go ahead and oops, do that. Ow! Wasn't very smart. Let me go here. Might as well get that off, and then I think I can can pop. Can I pop this off? I can. Good. Just popping these off here, um, and then yeah, I'm gonna have to cut those. Those, cut those, and then make sure I pull that in, pull that through fairly tightly. And then, yeah, what I did before is I just knotted each of those ends. I took two, yeah, each adjacent piece of yarn and knotted it together. Should probably do a square knot on each of on each of these, but for now we'll just do this. 
and then I trimmed it. And I think that's what I'm going to have to do here. Because I don't see a better solution off the top of my head. Um, oh, that's right. So when she did it, she would like hang it on dowels. So she would keep the one with all the loops on it. Um, just keep that end with all the loops on it and then just hang it from that. And there, there, there was some way, obviously, of finishing it. Um, uh, of you know finishing that that final line of just I think oh she just she just tied off that that final that final line and then she just you know ran a dowel through that loop and then on the other s side I think she did do this knotting the and that's just the uh, the tutorial I was reading before um, so that's gonna have to go there sorry not that there. And then this goes there. Okay, so that's nice and tied off. And again, we'll just trim that. And then, yeah, I think we'll do the same thing back here. Get the loom out of the way. Cool. Nothing too crazy here, but I want to show you the entire thing for, uh, for completeness. I'm assuming it would be better if I double knotted it, which I may go back and do. Uh, I gotta make sure I get all these in there. Okay. Oop. Oop. Kind of octopus tendrils here, just we weaving all over the place, flailing around. And get that in there. Oh, that's where's the other side? Okay, there we are. Gotta get that nice and taut. Okay, that's there. And then we tie this. Ah, okay. And we tie this off here to finish that off. Okay. And that's just that tail coming off that I can. I think I can just cut. Okay. So I'm going to go back and square knot each of these, but, oh, and this, that's right. Uh, let me just go ahead and I'm going to square knot it. And then cut off the trim, cut off the excess. Don't want to go too close because then it just pops right out. So I'm going as close as I dare. Okay, and you can see it's there. There's a little little knot there, but it's not too, not too noticeable. Not noticeable. That's it. But yeah, you could even kind of tuck it under, and hide it. Cool. So, that's what you get. That's a little woven piece of, of thing. That's really cool. So as as you saw, we got a little. And it's not it's not perfectly square, right? We it. it Tucked in a little bit as we went up, but that's a matter of learning how to, to tuck that with the fork. And it looks very nice. Like this is very solid. It's it's solid. Like that's that's good weave. Um, I could definitely see wearing this on a on a cold winter night. Hmm. And it's very comfortable. I mean, it's very very soft. Yeah, I can see myself weaving like a, a vest or a, something out of this, like a sweater. It's a thought. Um, let me just start with like leg warmers or something. But anyway, cool. So that is that is weaving on a cardboard loom. Very easy. Um, difference between weaving and knitting, good question, drop kicks. Uh, with knitting, there's no loom. So with weaving on a loom, you actually have this this piece. And it's often like a, fr a wooden frame, uh, much more often than this. Um, so with knitting, you're, you're taking needles and and essentially weaving on needles, and and so that there's no other material than that. And I will probably try knitting here sometime soon, just to learn that. Uh, but with weaving, you actually have this, yeah, you have some platform you're kind of working on. Um, and I think you, I mean, I think probably I suspect that knitting is technically a form of weaving, right? Um, but this is not knitting. 
right? So weaving is the blanket term, whereas knitting is actually knitting needles and thread or yarn or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's I'm quite happy with that. So like I said, I'll I'll knot these one more time just to make sure they're they're safe. Cut off some of the trim, uh, cut, off, cut off some of the excess, so it's maybe down to, to like this much on either side, and put it out somewhere in the house as something I made. I, I made this. This did not exist uh, an hour ago, and now it does. That's pretty darn cool. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, next week we'll be doing some. Actually, I want to try out some interesting ink. Uh, sort of transfer methods where you take a photograph and sort of make an ink copy of it basically by essentially adding ink onto it and then, and then pressing paper onto it so we're going to try that out and see what it looks like uh, i've got the, the materials for that so something else kind of crafty for next time so thank you all very much and we will see you next time until next time make something